Take a good look at these images. Can you see those threads shining in the sun? Those lines stretching across the fields? Well, they're not power lines. Much less fences. They're fiber optics from drones. Each of those wires belongs to a drone guided directly by an operator. Mostly Russian operators. The problem? They're impossible to jam with electronic interference. And they have thousands of them. The only option for Ukraine is to spend millions of dollars to shoot down drones that cost 20000 This is the reality of modern warfare. Swarms of drones, saturation of air defenses, attacks happening all day long. And in this equation, the math was brutal for Ukraine. How could they sustain this for long? That's when the United Kingdom brought something different. It's not the most expensive system, nor the most powerful, but it's the system that Russia fears the most right now. And you're going to find out why. First, let's understand this math that doesn't add up. An Iranian Shahed drone, which Russia uses a lot, It costs between $20,000 to $50,000 to produce. It's cheap, very cheap. Now, for Ukraine to shoot down this drone, they need to use an interceptor missile. A Nazan's missile, or an S-300, costs between $500,000 to $1 million. Now imagine that with every shot. Do you see the problem? Russia spends $20,000. Ukraine has to spend a million. That equation just doesn't add up. Even if Ukraine hits all the targets, it still ends up losing in the economic war. Russia can send 10 drones for the price of a single Ukrainian interceptor missile. That's called a trade-off, cost symmetry. And it was forcing Ukraine to choose between two bad options. Either they let the drones through and destroy critical infrastructure, or they spent their entire stock of expensive missiles defending against cheap targets. That's when, in October 2023, the United Kingdom announced a 100 million pound military aid package for Ukraine. In that package, there was equipment for mine clearance, vehicle maintenance, and air defense systems. But the main item was something that many people had never heard of. The Terrahawk Paladin, a system developed by MSI Defense Systems. The announcement said it was a platform capable of tracking and destroying drones and protecting critical infrastructure. But after that initial announcement, the system disappeared. Total silence. No one knew if it was actually being used in Ukraine. Experts began to wonder if the Paladin had actually been delivered. Until in November this year, a video changed everything. The 156th Ukrainian Anti-Aircraft Missile Regiment posted images on social media. They were the first confirmed footage of the Terrahawk Paladin in operation with Ukrainian forces. The system was mounted on a German Maschinenfabrik Augsburg-Nürnberg 8x8 truck, exactly as it was designed. Mobile, ready for action, and with interesting field modifications. The Ukrainians added protective screens around the radar mast and sensors. Extra protection against drones and fragmentation. This shows real combat experience being applied. The truth is that the 156th Regiment of Ukraine is not just any unit. This is a force that has existed since 1992, right after the dissolution of the Soviet Union. And their track record is impressive. By November of this year, they had destroyed 619 targets, 542 drones, 29 helicopters, 13 aircraft, 35 cruise missiles, hundreds of millions of dollars in Russian equipment eliminated from the sky. And do you want to know what makes the Terrahawk Paladin so special? Because when you find out, 
you'll understand why Russia should be worried about it. First, you need to understand where this system came from. MSI Defense Systems is not just any company. They have over a hundred years of experience manufacturing naval weapons. They supply the British Royal Navy and more than 40 navies around the world. The Paladin is based on the Seahawk systems, which are the cannons used to defend warships against close-range threats. So, this is not a land-based system adapted for air defense. It's the opposite. It's a naval cannon brought to land. And that makes all the difference. Naval systems need to operate under extreme conditions. Corrosion from salt water, constant movement on multiple axes, small and fast targets against the chaotic background of the waves. That robustness was brought to the land battlefield. The heart of the system is a Mark 44 Bushmaster II automatic cannon, 30 millimeters, manufactured by Northrop Grumman. And here is a crucial detail. It's not a gas-operated cannon like most. It's a chain gun, and that makes all the difference. Look, in a gas-operated cannon, if a round fails, the cannon stops. There's no gas pressure to cycle the action. The operator has to stop and clear the jam manually. In combat against swarms of drones, that can be fatal. But in a chain gun, an electric motor drives a chain that cycles the action. If a round fails, the motor simply ejects the faulty round and loads the next one. All of this happens without interruption. In practice, the gun never stops firing. This ensures continuous fire when you need it most. But the real magic is in the ammunition. The Paladin uses programmable airburst ammunition, the Mark 310. Each projectile is programmed at the moment of firing. The system calculates the distance to the target and programs the projectile to explode exactly at that point. The projectile doesn't need to hit the drone directly. It explodes near the target, creating a cloud of fragments, like a shotgun in the air. And here's an important detail because it changes everything. A burst of 10 Mark 310 projectiles costs between $1,000 and $3,000. Compare that to $1 million per interceptor missile. The math changed entirely. Ukraine can now destroy a $20,000 drone by spending only $3,000. The cost asymmetry has been reversed. And there's more. The system is remotely controlled. The crew isn't exposed on top of the vehicle. They operate from inside the truck's armored cabin or from a protected position up to 100 meters away. If the system is hit, the crew lives. The radar is a field control from the Polish Active Protection System. It's a solid state radar with no moving parts that means greater reliability and better detection of small targets. It can track multiple drones simultaneously and automatically prioritize threats. But do you know what's even better? The Paladin is not alone. The United Kingdom didn't just send one system. They created a layered defense ecosystem. And this is where the British strategy gets really interesting. Along with the Paladin, Ukraine received another British system, the Raven. And the Raven is completely different. The Raven uses advanced short-range air-to-air missiles, known as advanced short-range air-to-air missile. These are the same missiles that the Typhoon fighter jets of the Royal Air Force use. Sophisticated air-to-air -air missiles mounted on Supercat high-mobility transport trucks and they have been incredibly effective. The Ukrainian Western Air Command confirmed that the Raven has already destroyed 24 drones and four cruise missiles, including a KH-101, which is among Russia's best missiles. And with that, the United Kingdom has created a big dilemma for Russia. If Russia sends cheap drones, the Paladin destroys them with cheap ammunition. If Russia decides to send expensive cruise missiles or use planes to avoid the lower defenses, 
The Raven is waiting with air-to-air -air missiles. Russia was forced into an impossible choice. No matter what tactic they use, there's a British system waiting for them. This is real strategic chess. Ukrainian forces even attempted to use the Raven against a Russian Su-25 jet. They didn't confirm if they hit it, but the unit commander said something quite revealing. He said that after that incident, Russian planes started to appear much less in that area. Even without a confirmed kill, the intimidation effect was real. And this British strategy is not limited to Ukraine. Jordan also bought the Paladin system, and the Royal Jordanian Air Force showcased the system during the Sky Shield 2025 exercise. Want to know why Jordan wants this system? Because they face drug trafficking across the border with Syria using drones. Militias and traffickers use small drones to cross the border. The Paladin offers the perfect solution for this kind of threat. This proves that the system is not just an emergency solution for Ukraine, it's a commercially viable product that addresses a global threat. The proliferation of drones, especially in the hands of ordinary civilians, is a reality all over the world. Let me show you how this compares to other systems that Ukraine uses. Germany, for example, supplied the Jepard, a classic system mounted on a Leopard tank chassis from the 70s. It's effective, but hard to maintain. Germany also has the Skynex, which is theoretically more powerful than the Paladin, with 35 mm cannons, but it's significantly more expensive and complex. As for the Paladin, well, it found the sweet spot. It uses a cannon that's in thousands of infantry fighting vehicles around the world. That makes logistics easier. The radar is modern. It surpasses the old mechanical systems of the Gepard, and the cost allows for wider deployment. It's not the most powerful, but it's powerful enough. And the best part, it's affordable enough to make a real difference. So, what does all this mean? The truth is, for 50 years, the missile has reigned supreme in air defense, from portable stingers to strategic patriots. This doctrine worked when the targets were expensive manned aircraft and complex cruise missiles, targets whose replacement cost exceeded the cost of the interceptor. But one-way attack drones have completely changed that logic. When the attacker can send swarms of $20,000 munitions and the defender needs to use $1 million interceptors. The defender wins each individual battle, but loses the war of economic attrition. That's why we're seeing the return of the cannon. It's not nostalgia. It's not outdated technology. It's the fusion of a hundred years of naval artillery experience with artificial intelligence, solid state radar, and 21st century programmable ammunition. The video from the 156th Regiment in November isn't just the sight of a new weapon. It's the visual confirmation that the West is finally industrializing its response to the drone era. The math that once favored the attacker now favors the defender. Russia sends $20,000 drones Ukraine shoots them down with $3,000 ammunition. The United Kingdom not only provided a system, they provided a solution to a fundamental problem of modern warfare, and that solution is working. The systems you see defending Kiev today and the deserts of Jordan tomorrow are the vanguard of a new era in air defense. An era where the fly swatter is as important as the arrow. An era where economic efficiency is as crucial as technical capability. And as the war goes on, this economic logic of the Paladin will only become more vital. Because in the end, wars aren't won just by those who have the best weapons. They're won by those who can sustain the effort for longer. And the Terrahawk Paladin has changed that equation in Ukraine's favor. Now tell me in the comments, 
Do you think this layered defense strategy using cheap systems against drones will become the standard in future conflicts? If you found this content useful, share it with someone who likes this kind of analysis. And subscribe to the channel so you don't miss the next analyses on military technology and geopolitics. See you next time.